He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues, so just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity, these things aren't political. They're biblical. God's Word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Well, hey, happy Sunday to you. I am Tim Thompson, Senior Pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Glad to be with you on this Sunday, bringing the Word of God into your life. I really pray that this is a blessing for you. And with me, as always, is Jake Porter. Jake is the Assistant Pastor over here at 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Pastor Jake, always a pleasure to do ministry with you. Yeah, it's always great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, we're... uh, we're in a series right now um, talking about the the red letters of God's Word. Um, many people go through the, the Word of God and they'll get to those red letters. Those are the words of Jesus as he walked on earth. Um, we recorded, you know, they're recorded for us. People kind of take an approach sometimes saying, I'm only, I'm only going to read those red letters. I'm not going to read the rest of the Bible. They end up with a dilemma when they do that, and that is they lose the context. You know, they lose out on what was Jesus actually talking about. Most of the time he was referring back to the Old Testament. Well, yeah. what was he talking about, you know? Um, so we're, we're going through systematically, and we like to do that at the church, you know, verse by verse teaching, chapter by chapter, really fully understanding the Word of God and being biblically literate. And that is something that you take very seriously with our, our youth, and I take very we both take very seriously with our adults. Uh, we want to raise up a generation of people who know the Word of God. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We know that there's uh, people out in the world that want to indoctrinate the young people in this world, you know, raise them up with the the thought that they can have their own truth. You have your truth, I'll have my truth, and, and we're all good, and uh, raise them up in things that are simply lies. And, and we want them to know what does the actual truth have to say? What, is, right. what does God's word actually say about the, the life that God has called me to live here on earth? And we want them to be equipped and, and like you said, be biblically literate. So when they right. go off to college, they go off and do whatever they're going to do after they uh, graduate high school. Then they understand, okay, this is what God's word says about these situations I'm, I'm finding myself in. Right. Well, today we're in Matthew chapter 10. Uh, we preached the message on this recently. I want to uh, play a, a little portion of that. We'll listen. We'll come back and talk a little bit more about this. So take a listen to this. Today, as we move into chapter 10, I want to talk about the fundamentals of being sent out. Because we talked last week about this, this idea of, of growing in our knowledge, sharing that knowledge with other people. Jesus went around teaching people. He was teaching and preaching, and we gave a distinction between the two. But um, this need to go out and teach people the Word of God. And... In Matthew chapter 10, what we're going to see is Jesus is now going to send out people to teach, and we're going to look through what it is that he told them, pull some fundamental truths out of there about being sent, and that way we can apply those to us today. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, he says, it says that he called his 12 disciples to him. He gave them power over unclean spirits and cast, uh, to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And then he goes on to name the 12 disciples as apostles. And later on in this book, in Matthew's gospel, chapter 28, we get what's called the Great Commission, where Jesus has all power and authority in both heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now I'm sending you out. Go, I'm going to give you the authority. Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all these things that I have commanded you. So there's this responsibility to the believer that we would go out and make disciples of other people. We are now sent by God. We are ambassadors of Jesus while we're here on earth. Yeah, we're ambassadors of Jesus. We are sent you know, the, uh, like like the Great Commission says, all power and authority given to me, now you go. Okay. And we go out, we share our faith, and, and we see here in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, one of the, the first things we want to pull out of the Scriptures for us this morning, and that is that we need to start in the family of faith. We need to, to start with believers, make sure that, that God's people are living the life they're supposed to live, doing the things they're supposed to do. Verse 5 says, uh, these 12 Jesus sent out, and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, 
raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper nor um, in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tonic, uh, tunics, uh, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. So the idea here is go and talk to the people who claim to have faith in God and tell them, preach, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, could we be doing that today? Like, Is the kingdom of heaven at hand for yeah. us? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I we, believe so. we are closer and closer to the return of Christ every day. And it, it seems to me as though he'll be back in any moment, you know? Yeah. And so we need to be ready. We need to be, be prepared. And much of the church is not. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think it's a, a, a good thing to think about, man, before I, I go out into the rest of the world, what about the people right here? You know, what about the people in our own, in our own church? Are they equipped? Are they ready? Are they understanding what's, what's actually going on? You know, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, for the youth, for example, you know, how many kids are just kind of going through life and, and still they're just showing up to church because their parents take them and they really aren't starting to build their own relationship with Christ. They're not starting to really go out on their own with their faith. Well, do you understand really what's at hand? And I think that's important. Let's start right here. You know, right. do, do the people right here in our own congregation, does my friend group, does my family, do the people right around me, do they understand these these fundamentals yet? Right. You know, and, and a part of that is when you see that they don't, you need to call that out in their life. Now, that requires a judgment to be made on that person's behavior or the fruit in their life. And many people are under this false understanding that Christians aren't supposed to judge one another. Yeah. And it's just not true. Uh, biblically, it's not true. And they'll say, oh, well, the Bible says judge not, or you're going to be judged. And that's coming out of Matthew chapter 7. Judge not uh, that you be not judged for what with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back against you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look at the plank in your own in your own eye? So he says, hypocrite. First, now this is the key to, to understanding what God says when he says, judge not lest you be judged. He says, first, remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So the idea is you have done self-examination first. Yeah. You have done introspection first. You've looked at your own life. You've recognized where you are failing, and you have allowed God's spirit and his word to show you, to, to bring that conviction and then show you what you need to do to get rid of those things in your life. Then after then you're able to help somebody else out, but you have to then make a judgment on what's going on in their life. Yep. So the the important thing about judging is first judge yourself. Yeah. And I think when we look at what we're talking about, getting out into the world, we're sent out in the world. Well, first, first judge ourselves. Then let's judge the church. Let's make the church, make sure the church has this right before we get out into the world. We know the world has it wrong. Yeah. We already know that, you know, we can see everything going on around us. We know the world's got it wrong, but What's the church doing? Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a perfect example of people that have taken scripture and they're like, oh, that's what it says, but they, they take it out of context. Okay. Well, what is the, what is the rest of that section of scripture actually say? You know, right. what, what is the context of it? Right. You know, and it's not that we, oh, we shouldn't judge somebody. Well, there's a, a right time to make a judgment. It's after you've, you've reflected on yourself, take right. a look in the mirror and examine yourself a little bit right. before you go out to everybody else. Right. Um, but I think about how many churches are like that, where it's like, oh, you know, we're, we're going out, we're going to go out and do this, this and this. But then you look inward and it's like, whoa, there's a, a lot of, a lot of issues right there inside. Right. You know, and, and that's by all means, not to say we shouldn't go out and, and do things in our community and in the world and, and all of those things, those things are awesome. It's great. We should do that. But Let's look inward in the whole church. Right. What's the reflection of your of the own con your own congregation at that point? Right. Right. You know, another part of being sent out is I want our audience to know this. Don't get discouraged when when you bring the message out. Don't get discouraged when people won't receive it. Yeah. Because there's going to be people that just don't want to hear it. Even people that do what I, I frequently refer to as fly the banner of Christianity. Oh, I'm a Christian, and then you start talking to them about things that are holy, and they're oh, I'm I don't want to talk about that. You know, don't get discouraged when you bring the truth into people's lives. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 11, it says, Whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out. And when you go out 
into a or when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, which by the way, you have to make a judgment on that household whether it's worthy or not. Yep. Um, but if it's worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever you will, whoever will not receive you nor hear you, your words, when you depart from that house, and this is the, the key here, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Now, that is kind of a, an eerie way of, of doing this, of, of brushing the, the dust off your feet. It's like what you're telling them is I don't even want dust from your town to be on me yeah. because of the judgment that's going to come your way because you didn't want to hear God's word. And that's the whole idea is don't don't get discouraged. There's going to be people that, that just don't want to hear it. Brush brush the dust off. Keep on moving. Yeah. Wash your hands of wash your hands clean of those of those things, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And but we have to expect that. We have to expect that that not everybody's going to receive it. Right. Not everybody's going to be so receptive to it. We have to expect, okay, there's going to be some people. Scripture talks about those types of people, right? So we have to expect that that's going to happen. Right. But not let that say, oh, man, somebody rejected. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to go do that anymore. Like not let it discourage us to the point where it's like, oh, I, okay, I can't go share share those things. Right. You know, um, in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, do not give what is holy to the dogs, uh, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under feet and turn and tear you in pieces. So, you know, the, the idea there is, there again, a judgment has been made. You know, to, to refer to somebody as a dog or a pig, you've made a judgment on that person. Yeah. And, you know, you have to make that judgment because you have to know who to give the pearls to. Jesus says, don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't, you know, you're going to share the word. You have a pearl. You have the word of God. It's beautiful. It's perfect. It's, it's lovely. You know, try to give it to somebody, but if they're, if they're going to trample all over it, just stop giving it to them. Yeah. You know, and, and again, judgment has been made there. I want to take a quick break. We're going to listen to a word from our sponsor and we'll be right back after this. We are in a free speech war with big tech. Biden is going after independent news that doesn't lockstep with them on COVID shots adverse effects, and early treatment. If you value Valley News' award-winning, unbiased journalism and community coverage without a left slant, please support us by going to myvalleynews.com forward slash subscribe and sign up for $5 a month. We can do this. Well, hey, welcome back to the second half of Our Watch. I am Tim Thompson. With me, as always, is Jake Porter. We are both pastors over at 412 Church in Temecula Valley, and we are talking about the fundamentals of being sent out into the world. You know, Jesus said in the Great Commission, all power and authority on in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he says, go. He's, he, he takes that power and authority, and he, he offers that to his disciples, says, go out, be my representatives, go out. And win people for me, train them up, baptize them, show them how to do all the things I've already shown you how to do. Keep my word, you know. Um, as we talk about getting sent out, we, we said we want to start internally first, first with ourselves, but then with the church. We have no business going out to the world and telling the world what they should do if we don't get it right ourselves. Yeah. So start with ourselves. Start with the church. Also, we, we told the the audience we don't want people to get discouraged. You know, there's going to be some people that receive it. Awesome. You know, if they if they don't, they don't. You just move on and share it with someone else. You know, don't waste your time, basically. Yeah. But another thing is you need to utilize a combination of both wisdom and restraint. And we see that here in Matthew chapter 10, where Jesus said in verse 16, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Yeah. That's yeah. an interesting thing to think about. Yeah. Notice he, he, he says we're being sent out as sheep amongst wolves. He didn't say we're being sent out as eagles amongst field mice. Yeah. You know, the, if we were the eagles of the field mice, it'd be pretty easy for us to, to, we wouldn't have much to worry about. Right. Yeah. Um, but as a sheep amongst wolves, the wolves want to tear us up. The wolves just want to take and take and take and take from us. Yeah. You know? Um, so we have to understand that, that we have to approach being sent out in a certain way. And it's weird here that God would say to, that he wants us to be both wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove, that 
this is the only place in the Bible, by the way, where to be like a serpent is referred to in a good light. Yeah. You know, all the way back from the Garden of Eden, what was the serpent? The devil. The devil. Right. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, this is yeah. not, not a good thing to be referred to as a serpent or to say, I want you to be like a serpent. Only place in the Bible where we're told to, to do that. Um, of course, the doves represent the Holy Spirit, right? So we, we should we should be like both. And the idea with a, a, a serpent, I mean, what does a serpent spend most of its time doing? Nothing. Right. I mean, I, I've never owned a, I don't know if you ever had a pet snake. No, no, I've never had a pet snake. I know people that do. Um, that's, you know, I, I, I'm actually, I'll full disclosure. I'm just afraid of mice and I, I anything with <laughs> fur and a tail. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid of its food. So I could never have one cause I could never feed it. Anything with fur and a tail, but no fur on its tail creeps me out. So, um, but I've seen people that have these as pets, right? And and I look in the cage, and I'm like, what's it doing? He's, oh, it's just sitting there. What's it going to do? No, nah, nothing. Just going to sit there. Yeah. They, that's most of a snake or a serpent's life is just sitting there doing nothing. Yeah. Until so, it's... Or until it's time to do something. Time. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, once it's it's time to, to strike, you know, it's it's ready. It's prepared. It's been waiting for... for you know, it's prey to come by and then it, it does strike when it's time. And that's that's the point that we're we're being told here to be wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. You know, we have to know when to engage and when not to. Yeah. You know, and that's something I, I'm still, you know, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. I'm still trying to learn that, you know, especially the type of ministry that you and I are involved in where we're very involved in the public square. We're talking about the cultural issues. We're involved in, in local, local issues and trying to pray for, um, you know, our school boards and our city councils and stuff like that. There's a lot of wickedness going on all around and we want to, we are sent, you know, we have the power and the authority of Christ. We're his representatives here on earth. So we want to get out and we want to say things that need to be said. And there's times where I'm like, man, I shouldn't have said that. I should have waited to say that, or you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm still learning this. This is something that we we gain in maturity, we gain wisdom as we as we represent God, but we have to be wise. We have to know when to speak up. We have to know when to stay silent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think too, if you think about a serpent, you know, if you think about a snake, a snake is very calculated. If you're, you know, for example, if you ever go hiking, right? You're hiking down a trail. Uh, if you, if somebody ever gets bit, or if something happens, or if a snake is is hunting its prey, they're they're very calculated when they strike, right? You never see a snake just just lunging and striking just at air, or just striking at nothing. There, it's it's always at something, or it's a calculated. There's always a prey. There there's something they want to eat or whatever it is. They're very calculated in what they do. And I think when, when we think of ourselves where we need to be wise like a serpent, we shouldn't just be out just throwing God's word everywhere and just say, oh, well, do you know about Jesus? Do you know about Jesus? Or there's some people like, you know, I, I don't know how effective sometimes the, the street corner evangelizing is where you're out there with a big megaphone telling, oh, you're going to hell if you don't accept Jesus right now. And I'm not a fan. Yeah, I just don't know that it is that the most effective way to tell somebody, hey, Jesus loves you. I you don't have hope otherwise apart from Jesus, and 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 share the gospel with them. I I don't know. Maybe that is effective in some places, but you know, uh, it would be like a serpent just striking everywhere, just throwing, you know, just trying to strike and hoping you land on something. You know, a serpent's right. calculated. Oh, here's my prey. They they're very quiet and they sneak up and then they strike when the time is right. And, and not that we're trying to strike at our prey, but hey, there's a, a time and a place. There's a, a right place where it's like, okay, this is the time. Oh, God's put it on my heart. This is the time to to share with this person. Yeah. You know, and I think if we think of it in that way, where it, but then it's at the same time harmless like a dove, right. you know, and, and, and think of our actions and the way that we we share God's word when we're being sent out. Okay, let's be calculated with it. Let's, let's, Let's find the right opportunity. Not that we have to wait for the perfect circumstance, you know, because then we'll be scared and say, oh, no, it wasn't, this wasn't right, that wasn't right. But, you know, when is the time actually right? Yeah. Um, another element of getting out there, being sent, and and it's going to sound like I'm contradicting myself a little bit here, but I'm, I'm going to say we need to take time for preparation. We need to, to, to prepare our hearts, our minds when we – when we're going out. Now, when I said it sounds like I'm going to contradict myself here, it's because of what it says in Matthew 10, verse 17. It says, but beware of men 
for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my, my sake and a, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But, verse 19, when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak, for it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. So the the word of God here is saying, don't worry about what you're going to say. Yeah. You know, and, and some of you, will, well, didn't you just say we should be prepared? And doesn't this say, don't worry? Yes. And yes. Um, the, the whole idea here is you want to be prepared before you get in that situation. Yeah. You don't, you want, if you've taken in the word of God, you know, the, in Luke's gospel, it says out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth is going to speak. So if you take in God's word every day, you have a steady diet of the the word of God. When that time comes, you don't even have to worry about it. God's going to pull up from in you the word of God that's been there already. And you will find that you don't have to to say, oh, gosh, I better prepare a speech. No, don't worry about it. You've already put God's word in there. You're already prepared. You don't need to do anything. Just let God pull up what's there. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're, you know, the preparing a speech, right? You're not preparing in the sense that you have every word written out and okay, this is the exact word for word, what I'm going to say, you know, yeah. but it's more so you have God's word hidden in your heart. So what he's saying here is, okay, well, don't worry what you're going to say. It's going to, it's going to just overflow from what you have hidden in your heart. Right. So there's an element of preparation where there's, you know, work in Bible study. There's, there's spending time with God. You, you put in that effort. There's that preparation like you said, ahead before that situation even comes to your mind, before it even presents itself. Right. Um, a final point in here that I want to bring up, and I want to make sure that we we nail this down good and, and understand what I'm saying here. Um, I would say as we go out and we're, we're sent into the, the world, bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ, avoid persecution. Now, Let's make sure, let's see what God's word says, and let's talk about this a little bit. When I say avoid persecution, Jesus said in verse twenty-one, "Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and father, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes." Now. That being said, he's saying, look, you're going to, I'm sending you out, go into this city, bring the word. If they start persecuting you, understand persecution seeks to silence you. Yep. If they start persecuting you, go to the next city. Like you said, dust the, dust the dust off your feet. Hey, move on. Um, the, there are some people who think that it's a noble thing to be persecuted. Uh, if persecution is what silences you, how is it a noble thing to be silenced? Yeah. It is not a noble thing to be silenced because we're not supposed to be silent. We look at what's happening in our culture. The enemy has been very successful in silencing the Christian voice. And we should not be silent. So if we, oh, well, I'm persecuted. Well, then, you know, oh, I'm per- persecuted at my job. You know, they, they, they fired me because I talked about Jesus. Okay, well, move on to the next job. Go, go somewhere else. Don't ever be silent persecuted to the point where you're you're done yeah you know unless it's a point of death and then amen you're in heaven but the whole point is keep moving on do not be silenced do not let anybody squash your christian voice yeah absolutely you know i like in verse 23 it says when they persecute you yeah it's not that we we, we can completely oh i'm never going to get persecuted the persecution it will come right but be wise like that serpent yeah Right. Okay. Flee to another city. Find a different way. Right. Find there's there's another way to do it. Figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Just don't be silent. Yeah. Exactly. Don't ever yeah. let anybody silence your Christian voice. Pastor Jake, that is all the time we have for today. I want to thank you for joining me yet yeah. again. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Always a pleasure. I want to thank you for tuning in to our watch. Uh, I want to encourage you. Use your Christian voice. Get out into the world. God's power and authority is with you. Preach the gospel. Don't ever let anybody silence you. That's all the time we have today. God bless you. We'll see you next week right here on Our Watch with Tim Thompson. This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you are encouraged to engage the culture around you. We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on ourwatch.com. That's O-U-R watch.com. Until next time, this is all of us at Our Watch reminding you to be bold, be strong, 
and to take back the public square.